Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain here, and I'm here to recruit painters to paint along with me and also to teach beginners of China painting how to get started in China painting. So, oh, um, we're going to get started now, and I, it looks like we're going to have a storm here, so it keeps getting darker and darker in this room. I already opened the blinds, but um, I may have to adjust the lighting as we go along. Um, what I did was I got a, another fancy plate and I looked on the back and I found that there were holes on the back to hang it. And I took off my label and I put my pattern on the front, but before I did, I put an X up at the top so that I know where uh, the top of the plate is if somebody wants to hang this so I don't paint it upside down. Um, then I put my wax-free transfer paper, the red paper that you see on here, whoops, here, this way. It's the Sorrel Wrap. If you're looking for what it's called, it's called Sorrel Wrap. And it's a Sorrel transfer paper. And it comes on a roll. And you can just, see, you can just pull it out like that. And uh, you can uh, transfer that onto your, uh, put that, tape it on your plate, and then put your line drawing over it. Um, I did my line drawing, I copied it onto a clear tracing paper, like a, a tracing paper. When I trace this, I'm going to trace it with a purple pen, a fine point pen. And that way, if you use a colored pen to trace, you can easily tell where you skipped. And so you don't have to keep lifting up the paper and looking underneath to see what you've done. This is how it turns out underneath. Oops, we've got a lot of glare. If I bring it in, it's a little easier to see. There you go. Okay, so that's how it transfers. So we're gonna start with the middle poppy, which is, if you can see it, it's, I don't wanna to get too close. It's this one right here. Yeah, there you can kind of see it. Yeah, it's this one right here. And um, we start with the top part of the poppy. And uh, I had a teacher who used to always paint things out for us, and this is what she gave us. And she would give us the first, the second, and the third fire, and then she would give us the names of the paints that she used. So um, I'm using uh, her suggestion of yellow red, and I also found she uses a pansy purple to get a little bit of depth at the base, and I was surprised, but when I did it, it really worked well. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be painting down here at the base, coming around, oops. with a little bit of pansy purple. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going around that uh, center of the flower there. Now, I try doing these the way Barbara Duncan does hers, because she pulls from the top down, and then on the bottom leaf, she pulls from the bottom up. And I tried probably eight to 10 times to do that, and I could not get it. I find for me, it's easier to do it almost like I did the poppies, which is you paint around the center and the same thing with the wild roses, if you remember, and then you paint around the outside. Oops, let me get a little more color in here. And then I like to smooth it, and I think that that is what works the best for me. But the key with the poppy is you always want to keep angling right towards the center of the poppy. So now I'm going to smooth it real gently. We talked about this a million times. This is when you hold the end of the brush and very lightly pull out. And then you have the top part of your poppy. Now, poppies are not smooth like roses. They have a lot of ridges and ruffles. So you can clean your brush a little on your paper towel and pull down and give it a little bit of some ridges. Here we go. I'll show you how I did all that. So see, that's how it turned out. Now on the bottom part of this, this part is a cup and it cups up. So uh, you can do it one of two ways. If it works for you, you can just turn it over and paint from the bottom up. 
For me, that did not work. I tried that a couple of times. And so what I do is I paint. I put my paint on, it's a side load that I use. And the brush I'm using is my half inch because this is a good size poppy. And I just, I need a little more oil on there. I'm using yellow red and I just go around the base. But I make it short, choppy strokes because like I said with the poppy, it's not like a rose, it doesn't have to be smooth. And then up at the top where we have the ruffle, I'm just going to do like we did on the wild roses, kind of. I'm just going to kind of go around that ruffle. Leaving a few breaks here and there. Then, you see how choppy that is? And then I'm going to smooth it. Okay. Now I don't know if you can see where the center is on this. I'm going to clean it out just a tad because it does have an, a little bit of red on it. And to clean it, I use my mineral spirits. I really rinse my brush and then I push down as hard as I can. I always use my middle finger, the one you're not supposed to use when you're a little kid. I always use that finger to... Um, push the mineral spirits out of my brush. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush. I have, a, this is a four. Can you see it there? That's a four. And, and because you never know the last time you use the brush, you always, when you're starting with the brush, make sure it's clean. Clean it out with your mineral spirits. And I'm going to use a chartreuse, which is a very yellow green. And you may not be able to get chartreuse. If you can't, you can use a yellow green. And I'm just going to do the center section. Now, you're not going to be able to see this color very well. So I'm going to add a little bit of moss green so you can see the color in there. I nope, need a little more moss green. Okay, so that's my poppy on the first two parts of it. Now, a poppy, as it unwraps, kind of reminds me of a tissue flower. So we have this leaf over here, we have another leaf across the bottom, we have a leaf on this side. Um, the leaf over here, I'm going to use a little bit of the um, pansy purple on the bottom with the yellow red. I know it sounds terrible, but it actually looks really good. Just to get the depth in. Can you see that? It is kind of an odd color combination, but it does work. And then I'm just going to take the yellow red and go around the top like I did on the others, making kind of choppy strokes. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off really well and pull down. or pull up if the case, if it requires it. Just to kind of smooth that out a little. I don't want it totally smooth, so I did add a little bit of a highlight there. Now, I know you think, well, it needs more highlights than that. Yes, it does, I agree. Um, and we will get to that. So now we're gonna do down here at the bottom, the one that wraps around the bottom of the pans, uh, poppy, and we're going to start, I start on this side because, and I don't know if you can see it real well, but this is the top leaf, this is the under leaf, so I put the pansy purple on with the, so I full load with the yellow red, I side load with the pansy purple, and I put that on here, so it gives it a little depth to go under the leaf that's on top. I know that sounds horrible, that color combination. If you hear that noise behind me, that's my garbage men. Wednesday is always garbage day. And I kind of regret it because
They usually go by about halfway through, but you can't always be sure of that, so. Okay, now I made my, my strokes kind of choppy there. I don't really want them that choppy, so I'll go around and as I do the upper part of the petal. Oops, I need a little more oil. You'll know when you need oil because your piece will start, your brush will start to drag. Side load again. There, see how much better that is? And I'm coming around. They are a lot like a rose, I think. except that they're flatter. And it was the flatness, I think, that threw me for a long time because I wasn't real comfortable with it. Now, you may have to go in if you use, like I did, a little too much of that um, purple. And then you go back in and give it a little wipe out. And then kind of just, there. So that's the bottom one. And I might do a little wipe out right here too. You press down and then lift up and that helps to get it going. And then if you think, and I think I've got a little bit of a line going right here, I'm just going to take the side of my brush and lightly brush it so it's not quite so definite. Okay, and now I'm working on my final petal of the poppy, which is right here. If you feel that you um, want to stop with the poppies and not do background on the first fire, that's fine. I'm going to do background because I think it helps to find the poppies. And I'm not going to do anything real heavy, but I'm going to do a light background. Oops, need a little more oil. So I'm taking my yellow, red, and my pansy purple. And I'm just loading it around this side. Can you see? I'm sorry, I should pull it up a little higher. There. And then I'm gonna turn the plate to do the outer edge. So, I don't know if you're the type of person that just pulls it down. I'll try to show you on the next one how, um, Barbara just pulled it down, and I thought it was awesome, but I can't seem to get it to do that for me, so. Okay. So there, I've done the outside. Now, I'm cleaning my brush real well, and you will have to clean really well when you use these colors, because these colors in particular are horrible. And I'm just... Uh, cleaning up around the edges a little bit. And I'm going to use a wipeout tool. I use a wipeout tool because some people use a silk. I don't have nails, so I use a wipeout tool. And I'm just gonna go through and wipe out some highlights. Can you see how I did that? Uh, I use a wedge eraser for this um, if you wanted it finer, but I don't think you do. You could use the, the Pico Pay that we talked about. And Pico Pay looks like this. And then you're going to take and, oops, I know I have only turpentine on my brush, so I'm going to add a little oil and just a tad of red, red paint just so I can smooth this. Because when you do that, and use your wipeout tool, inevitably you get a ridge of paint. Can, I don't know if you can see the ridge of paint. On this particular one, it's on the top of where I wiped out. And you just wanna use the corner of your brush and clean that up because it will fire as a line if you don't. Okay, and then now Barbara Duncan would have said from here, I'm down like that. Always coming right towards the center and use the side of your brush. And I can do that and it does help a little bit, I think. So 
that might be something you'd want to try. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the eraser, with the wipeout tool on this petal here because it's kind of getting lost in the one underneath. So I kind of wiped it out a little bit and then I will clean up the edges of that wipeout tool just so it doesn't form lines that I can't deal with. And let me come down here. Okay. Okay, and up at the top, I think I want it to look a little bit roughly too. I'm doing these maybe a little exaggerated just so you can see them. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just sort of following the lines that are there. I'm just underneath them a little bit. And I find that if you just flip, 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 not, not draw, but sort of sketch, you get a little better result. Now there you can definitely see, oops, let me move into focus. You can definitely see the lines. So I'm going to pull those lines down, get them out of there. Same here. Same here. Okay, and I'm going to do a little bit of the pull because the paint is set up so it's a little easier to get a little bit of The secret is to try to keep it a nice long stroke. Okay? And then over here I might do a little pull. There. Okay, so that's my main poppy. I'm not doing any of the middle or anything on this time. Now there's another poppy behind it right here. And I'm going to um, do the same thing there. And I'm going to try to show you what um, the other technique, which was Barbara's technique. And I don't know how well this will work, but she did a full load and she just pulled. Oops. See, that's part of the problem. I'm painting on china that is not tinted, so it doesn't, um, it's not as forgiving. It's very slippery and it doesn't hold your paint as well. So if you want to try it on a tinted plate, you may have better luck. So this is what she did. She just pulled it in like that. And then she went back at the end and, and she um, did the highlights and pulled it out. Okay. And I'm going to I have to do this my way down here. I can't. She would pull up. Oh, sorry, I'm out of the frame. There we go. She would pull up from the bottom like this. And up from the bottom like this. And then on her sides, she would pull into the middle using a kind of a scalloping stroke. So she would do this. She would come out like this. And then she would turn it around and come in. Up. A little more. And I'm going to add a little bit of purple in here just to give it a little depth. So she blocked in like that. She really blocked in. Then she cleaned her brush. And this is the other technique if you want to use it. This this will work probably as well for you. Uh, I take my wipeout tool next and I make um, the little... Uh, pickies here. I don't know what you call them. So 
sort of shape the end of the flowers, the petals. Okay, now I'm going to pull down. So I just pull down, pull down, pull down. You see how I did it on the cup there? And now I'm going to do it up on the top there. Pull down. Pull down. Pull down. And then over on this side where we have the little leaf, the little petal that's dark, I'm going to just pull it in. And pull it in. Okay, so there's two poppies. Now, let me just do the last thing on this poppy and then I can really show you close. I'm going to take the chartreuse, a little moss green, so you can see it, and I'm going to put it in the center there. So there, can you see the two? Oops, I'm sorry, the color is changing a little bit. Those are the two poppies that I've done. Now I have some leaves blocked out. I'll show you how to do the leaves. Um, I'm going to go back to my half inch brush. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use like a, a moss green and a brown green in order to get those because I think it'll give me a little better color. I might even use a little black green because I really want it to be kind of dark. So I have one here. And these leaves are, my painting so you can see, let me turn it so you can see a little better. These leaves are very jagged. So let me get this a little better here. see there they're very very jagged another way you can do these is use a cool green and a um, let me see what else was the other one I used cool green and a gray green And that will give you an interesting color combination. The cool green is kind of a blue green, and the gray green is a, a gray green. Um, and need a little more oil on my brush here. I'm gonna take the cool green, and I'm just gonna, oops, a little dark. You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to get it so you can see it there. And if there are little nooks and crannies on this petal, you can always put those in as you go around. These are pointy leaves. They are not like rose leaves. They are pointy. And then I'm going to use the cool green and a little brown green here. When I go across, I create the center vein. Do you see that right there? That's the center vein. Then I turn the plate and I come down and finish the leaf. And I kind of just go around the edge of the leaf because we talked about this before. You can always take and cover up things if they're too bright. But if you leave, if they are, oops, I need to move up. If they are, if they don't have the light in them on the first try, you won't get it on the second. So always make sure you leave some light on the first try. Wipe it out if you need to. Um, let me clean this up. There we go. 
So those are my three leaves. Then I'm going to go behind this. Now the background, I have like a Tahiti green and nobody has that Tahiti green. So I would say the closest thing might be a baby blue, a forget-me-not blue, um, cool shadow, something that you have that's kind of a, a pretty green, a bright green. I have a bright blue. I'm sorry, this is a blue. So can you see what I'm doing here? And I'm just, I am going to put it around the entire um, I am eventually going to put it around in here, right in through here. And I'm gonna put a little yellow here, uh, yellow brown, I think, or uh, uh, like a light yellow brown. And then I'm gonna kind of do um, more of a green. As you blend the blue into the yellow, it becomes kind of a green. I'm gonna do more of a green up and through here. On this fire, now I think, ultimately, I'm going to wanna have this be browns and greens, but I haven't gotten that far yet. So I'm putting the blues in because they complement those colors. But if you don't put them in behind these things now, you won't have them later. So I'm putting the background in as I go on this piece. And I use C strokes around the flower. And then I use that cross hatch, kind of a feather stroke to pull the color out. Okay. And here, if you want to put a little, a few little places where there's a little ruffle, you can create that by using your, either your background, or you can create it by using your, the color on your leaves. That's a little better. And as you go, you'll see things you don't like and you'll need to smooth them. And that's how you do it. So see, I use a, I use a, um, I use a little C stroke. Let me get a little more paint on that brush there. I need a little more oil. And then I'm gonna just pull it out. Can you see how I'm pulling it out? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because it's a cross hatch, I go this way, I go that way. I just keep pulling until I get it out where I want it. Okay. And like I said, I think I'm going to go with a more of a green as I go further out. So I can start adding some of that now. Adding a little more oil. I'm taking a little brown green and I'm just kind of messing it around. Cross hatching it. See? And then I'm picking up a little of the, the blue that I'm using. You can use a baby blue, it'll look just fine. You don't have to. And leave a few breaks here and there as you do this. See how I did there? And then you'll gradually go around the whole plate. Get it the way you want it. And that's all we're gonna do on the first fire, except to write your name. And again, this is something we hadn't talked about before, so I wanted to show you how I set it up to write your name. You can do it with using the powder paint. I have two oils. I have this one, which is it's called Amps. Uh, hang on here, Amps Easy Flow. And I also have another one. It has some really wild numbers on it. It has AGS 21 Drying Pen Oil. Now, you can choose which one you like, but if you use an open one, it won't dry. If you use a closed one, it will dry. And the nice thing about that is it won't smear up your name. So if I'm going to write my name, let's say I'm going to do it in a black green. I get a little black green on my palette. 
I take my drying oil, and these oils come from Dallas, and if you call them and tell them you want pen oil, they can send you the small ones, and I've had these for three years, and I've only used that much. So they're, you don't go through them very fast, and what you need is a dropper. Hmm. Okay, I don't see my dropper here. So I'm just going to use my palette knife, and I'm just going to, there. I got a little of it. Can you see? Got a little of it on there. And I, this is what I was talking about, is if you don't know how much to add, take your palette knife and smooth it over and add it. And then if you need more, you can add that. Um, a teacher I watched one time said the way to know is if it drips off the end slowly. And this is going to drip. So that's how you know you've got the right mixture. And then you take a pen and you need a good nub. Don't settle for a pen that has a broken nub or where the ed ends are separated. You can go buy these. They're very simple to get a hold of um, at any art store. And you want a very fine one and you're gonna just pick it up on your pen and then you're gonna write your name. I wrote it up there so you could see it, okay? Do it on the first fire, that way it'll get buried by the upcoming fires. And if I were to come back to this paint in a little while, it would be dry and I wouldn't be able to move it. So that's why I like the drying oil. I think it works the best, so. Um, that's just another uh, thing we learned how to do this time. You learned how to mix your paints. I'll pull you back up so I can see you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me. I hope you liked what you saw, and if you did, please like this page and also subscribe to it. And in addition, um, you can check out any of the products or studies that you saw at paintandporcelain.com or check the uh, description box below for information.